What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to show you the devastation that a recent storm caused in the garden and also show you an ancient huge vegetable that the storm revealed. Let's go! Recently, the weather has been less than perfect for growing food. It's actually been quite nasty. We've had so much rain and a lot of strong winds and it's caused a lot of damage in the garden. Even just to start off, when it comes to the brassicas, my broccolis and stuff, they've gotten so tall because of lack of sunlight, but then the wind also caused them to kind of blow over. So I'm having to like tie them up a bit. So it's a bit unfortunate, but things are still growing relatively well for how poor the weather has been. On this side, you'll notice I've got all my fall stuff in doing okay. And then to the right of me here, we still have a lot of summer things that are trying to hold on like peppers and stuff here. Some beautiful peppers here, peppers here, other peppers back here that need to be harvested. And then you'll notice right over here, here's one of the tomatoes that got a little bit of damage, but I've got some tomatoes like further in the garden that just got crushed. I'll show you them in a minute. Even some of my peppers have been blown over. They're still trying to kick out some peppers, but it's just not, they don't look as good as they did. This pepper though, is still kicking out a few peppers. I'm gonna take a bite of this one. Uh, beautiful orange bell pepper. Mm. Incredibly sweet, really good stuff. See if Tuck wants a bite. Want a bite, Tuck? A little pepper? See if this guy wants a little pepper. He usually likes the peppers. What do you think, boy? Pretty good? Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. We'll let him snack on that as I show you some a few other things. Just look at the ground. Look how many tomatoes have just been dropped through the rain and actually through the strong wind. The wind has been just crazy, just whipping everything around. Come over here though. One thing that's held up relatively well is this Suli pear. This is an Asian pear and it's got a lot of nice pears on it. I want to try one, I bet they're really good. They're getting super close to being ideally ripe. Let's grab this one back here. Let's see, it's got a nice size to it. It's supposed to be sweet, crisp. Uh, let's see how they are. Mm. Super sweet, super good, really refreshing. I probably should have thinned the tree a little bit more because it looks like it's possibly overbearing, but uh, I'm happy with it, especially how well it held up with the wind. Some apples back there too. That did okay through the wind storms. Some big apples back here. Let me grab one of these. Not the most beautiful color to them, but still looks nice. I would butt into this, but I think I've been eating enough uh, this early in the video. Let's go move to a couple different sections where I'll show you where the storms really cause a lot of damage. And I'll show you that ancient vegetable that just like the storm revealed it. I didn't even know they were growing there. And then like the storm, mo storm moved a few things around and then all of a sudden I'm like, how did I even miss that thing? Right here is one of the tomatoes that the storm and the wind just destroyed basically. It snapped the bamboo right in half because the tomato was so top heavy. This is the mountain magic tomato and it was producing so much fruit. The issue, like I just mentioned though, was it was so top heavy. So when that strong wind came with all the tomatoes on it, it just snapped the bamboo right in half. And this bamboo is from this year. So it's not even an old bamboo. It's just, uh, it's just a lot of weight. I've got other tomatoes that this happened to as well. Come over here though. Check out the brassicas growing in this bed, doing relatively well. These ones went in a little later than the brassicas that I showed you earlier. And this Honeycrisp apple tree also took a lot of, it took a strong hit from the wind. It blew most of the apples off, which is a bit unfortunate but we can't really cry about it too much because right over here, the Liberty apple is still holding so many apples. Look at that. So this tree, tree was a little stronger. It held on to its apples better. And uh, so many are ripe and ready. Look at the color on them too. These ones are so good. Right here is another tomato that just got too top heavy and the bamboo just snapped it. I don't think it's worth it right now to try to push something deep into the soil to try to stake the tomato to. I'm just gonna let the tomato grow like this a little bit. Still harvest a few tomatoes, but for the most part, the tomato season's over. We're already, we're like so late into the growing season. Anything that we get is just bonus. Like I mentioned, we can't complain about the weather right now. For the most part, the growing season has been incredible. It's been the most productive, 
we've ever had. We've grown a lot of things that we've never grown before and the harvests have just been absolutely massive. So I'm not upset over the weather. It's just a little unfortunate that, uh, that it just caused some damage to the garden. I was hoping to get tomatoes super, super late into the season. This is gonna reduce my tomato production by a little bit. Let's go back to that ancient vegetable that the storm revealed though. It wasn't all bad things that came from the storm. Let's check out the ancient vegetable that the storm revealed right back here. This is the African drum gourd. Look at the size of this thing. It's insane. And I read that this is known to be one of the, like the oldest domesticated plants and one of the first cultivated plants. Cultures have been using it for like thousands of years. You could eat it when it's young, it's a calabash gourd, but as it gets older like this, it gets kind of fibrous and it doesn't taste as good. So you're gonna to wanna to eat them when they're immature. Also, it's been used for utensils like bowls and uh, containers, stuff like that. And it's even been used for, like I mentioned earlier, it's the African drum gourd as a drum. So it's got so many different uses. It's a really cool plant and it's unbelievable how vigorous the vines are. I didn't even know, like I didn't remember that I even planted it. This was covered in vines and I didn't even see it. All of a sudden I came out after the storm to just see how things were doing. And then it was like, what, where did this thing come from? And then I noticed I have a number of other ones too. So I guess it was just late in the season when everything kind of died back. Look, there's another one back here. <laughs> Look at the size of it too. When everything was dying back, these things just kind of took over. I usually just grow edibles and I was under the impression that this, that this was more of an edible. I guess I didn't do my homework. Like I mentioned, it could be eaten as an edible just when they're really small. And they come in all different sizes. You can get the big drum ones like this. You can get like long, thin ones. Look at this guy trying to get through the squash. He knows that there's cucumbers in the background. I've got cucumbers ready to be harvested back there. So uh, I know he's looking for one. Let me grab him one and I'll talk a little bit more about the squash and then show you a few other ones we have. I meant the gourd. Talk, you want a cucumber boy? We've got some cucumbers growing back here. Some late season ones that I planted in production this late in the season. We always like pushing it as far as we can and we like to get tuck some cucumbers because they're one of his favorite all time veggies. Right boy? Let him snack on that. Right here's another African drum gourd. And I'm pretty sure I only planted one vine and they've just like almost taken over this whole section back here. The vines are so vigorous it seems like they're immune to every kind of disease problem, every kind of pest problem. They're just so insanely productive. If you have a problem with vine borers, you could grow something like that, or you could grow the butternut squash. The butternut squash are practically immune to vine borers. So if you have a lot of problems growing squash, you should definitely plant the butternut. I've got these littered all over the garden, and it seems like late in the season, and if you have problems growing squash, the butternuts definitely want to get into the ground. This is the African drum gourd. Look how massive the stalk is. It looks like something got to the base of it, but it did not slow it down. It just basically took over this whole section back here. I got to bring you to another spot in the back corner where I have them hanging from bushes. It looks insane. Check this out. Here's the gourd just hanging. I can't imagine how heavy this thing is and the, the vines are still holding it up. It must be so strong. It's hanging from a autumn olive which is pretty funny. I saw the vine growing on the front of the autumn olive, but I didn't know what kind of vegetable it was or anything. Not till like uh, recently did I come out and notice these things are what's hanging from it. So it's been cool to grow this, but I'd have to say, I don't think I'm probably gonna end up growing it again in the future, just because I like to focus mainly on things that are edibles. This, I guess, could be an edible when you eat, if you eat it when they're really immature, but uh, I don't have really much to do now with these monster gourds. Maybe I'll try to make a drum out of it or something, but I'm not sure how that would go. You'll notice right behind me, there's another one hanging back there too. So it's kind of funny. I didn't even like, I wasn't even privy to them growing back here until the storm came. So it's funny how that kind of like opened things up and revealed it to me that that's what it was. And it's at first I was like, what the heck even is that? I had to go through all my seed packs to find out what I actually planted because I didn't even remember sticking it in the ground. So overall, fun to grow, but probably won't grow it again. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had a blast just running around, showing you some of the stuff that happened from the storm, and then sharing with you that monster gourd. It's like nothing I've ever grown before. We've got a lot of stuff that's ready to be harvested back here. A lot of things in pots. You'll see some of the damage caused. Look how unfortunate this was. 
nice pepper with all these peppers just kind of snapped. This pepper went bad, but uh, these are still good to eat, I bet. So the storm caused some damage, but again, we can't complain about it. We had such an incredible growing season and we still have all of our fall stuff doing relatively well. I've got other fall things in pots. So we still have a lot more growing and a lot more harvesting to do this year, which is pretty awesome. We also think it's fun to like always grow different stuff. So maybe that wasn't my favorite thing to grow, but I did get a lot of joy out of like, uh, out of just like finding it in the garden just a, like a week or two ago. And we always encourage you guys to grow some stuff that just gets you excited to be out in the garden. It's all about growing more food. So something you plant, even if it isn't edible, but it gets you excited to be out in the garden, the rest of the garden will do better because you'll spend more time out there and you'll give things more attention. So it's all about getting out there, getting things in the ground and just being in the garden as much as possible because you could turn your whole backyard into like your own little oasis, even if you're on a patio. Me and Tuck wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Rachel Ward. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. We also wanted to mention to check out the new merch at jamesprigioni.com. I'm real happy with the way this came out. It says, so with the flow on it. So I think it kind of goes relatively well with the theme of the video where it's like, yeah, you might've had a bad storm that destroy things, but you still got to just sell with the flow. You got to get out there. You got to keep planting. And the only way you're going to get harvest is just to keep seeding. Tuck was out here. He had a blast. We want you to spam some hearts down low to sh for him showing his dedication. He never quits. He's always out here. Even on nasty rainy days, he's always working because uh, someone's got to protect the garden, right boy? We had a blast. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.